I watched Art Attack growing up. That was a terrifying show. I had a British guy yell at me about art with a just a head, just a talking head who was also British yelling. Do you remember that show, Art Attack? It was amazing. My grandma loved him, huge crush on him. Welcome back to Bumblebee. Here are the top 10 unsettling works of art that angered the public. Yeah, grab your pitchforks. We're throwing soup at art. That's soup. Grab your weird orange oils. We're bashing art today. Number 10, Erased de Kooning. This is my personal favorite on our list. So we have to start off with this one. I was so excited to talk about this that I had to put it at number 10. This drawing here, or erasing, rather, was done by the one and only Robert Rauschenberg. See, Robert wanted to explore whether or not a piece of art could be created by removing markings rather than adding them. Yeah, oh, what? He just changed the game. Yeah, try this one on your art teacher. Next project, see what they say. Instant fail. Step one here was, I'm not gonna lie, kind of hilarious. First, Robert had to ask his very successful friend, a fellow Dutch artist, William de Kooning, for one of his brand new lovely drawings. And Robert Robert, um, well, he just erased it. Most of it, pretty much the entire thing gone. If he had like five more minutes, it would all be gone for sure. It's that close. There's barely anything left. After erasing all of this art, Robert added a frame and then called it art. Called it a day. He's like, hey, here's the new art. Some loved it. Some were like, ah, oh, yes, this is, this is it. This is something new. This is game changing. While others called this act pure vandalism, which I'm kind of on board for. I don't really, I don't get it, you know? 1953, this changed the game. De Kooning's involvement didn't help. That just made it more controversial because why did he give this painting away? Did he know it was going to be erased? Did you not know? So many questions. Number nine, Guernica, Pablo Picasso. 1937, one of Pablo Picasso's most famous works of art. It's an oil painting called Guernica, and initially it caused a public stir due to its political statement. Yeah, give me 47 more minutes to look at this and then we'll talk. What? I can't even tell what's going on. This looks like abstract art to me. I have no idea what's what this is. You're telling me people looked at this and knew what was happening? I'm impressed already. I need some glasses, apparently. The main subject the of Guernica was the killing of civilians by the government of Spain, which was allied with some not great people. Rhymes with Yahtzee. I'll let you figure it out for yourself. It got backlash because at the time this was considered war propaganda, used to condemn fascism. Now after World War II ended, the controversy faded. And I'm still looking at it this whole time, like, uh, I don't see anything. I don't know, not quite sure. Number eight, Yoko Ono, cut piece. 1964, this is some Shia LaBeouf type performance art. Here we go. In Yoko Ono's cut piece performance, the artist actually invited the audience, just real random people, not screened, not checked for anything dangerous on their persons. And she invited them to take a pair of scissors and cut off a piece of her clothing as she sat motionless and silent. And people actually did. Imagine that. Yeah, I can't even cut the tag off of Olivia's shirt without getting the shakes. And you're telling me random people cut parts of Yoko Ono's dress off? What? Why aren't they at work? Who are these people? Like, what did they do after that? They just put that fabric in their pocket and they're like, God, oh, I guess I have to hang on to this thing forever now. I don't know. Art's weird. I guess, I have this piece of Yoko Ono. Number seven, Yo Mama's Last Supper. I love this one. Jamaican American artist Renee Cox is known for reimagining classical religious scenes, but with black men and women. One piece that of course got backlash was her 1996 piece, Yo Mama's Last Supper. A beautiful piece, of course, a reimagining of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Her piece is made with five panels. Again, it is gorgeous. As a painting, as far as paintings go, I mean, I don't know how these eyes work in terms of art, but this is beautiful. The center panel depicts a nude woman as Jesus Christ, one J. Christ. In 2001, New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani called the piece anti-Catholic and that it was attacking people's ethnicity. Now they had meetings, real people, like adults had meetings. Imagine that, the headlines were all over the place. Rudy and rage over female Christ. Imagine that now, you'd be like, what? What did he do? Borat 3, you're like, what? what is he involved with this time? Are you upset by this? Is something that upsets you? I don't know, art's art. If it looks like this, I like it. It's like a beautiful piece. If it's just like spaghetti, eh, I don't know. I don't really get the movement if it's a spaghetti art piece. It's a boring one. Number six. Dropping a Han Dynasty urn. Ooh, this one here had historians a little upset. Q threw it on the ground by the Lonely Island. Here we go. Ai Weiwei, his work heavily criticizes the Chinese government, in case you already didn't figure that part out for yourself with the title here. Dropping a Han Dynasty urn. Now, it's a panel divided into three images, and these images get worse and worse when it comes to that urn's fate. The third frame shows a 200-year-old ceremonial urn, symbolic and cultural worth, just smashed to the ground. Now, in one glance, you can 
can see the entire event unfold. And that upset a great deal of people. Many referred to his work as a desecration. The argument here is to destroy the old world in order to build a new one, right? After I say that, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of get it now. See, that's art. It makes people talk. We're also allowed to disagree on art. That's really, really okay. That's why we have a dislike button as well. You can feel how you want, you know? But for sure, hit that thumbs up. That one's way better. We like that one a lot more. In fact, if you want to subscribe too and then hit the thumbs up, that would be really great for my artwork personally. I would love that. Thanks so much. Let's move on. Number five, Jackson Pollock, 1952. Art is subjective. Sometimes you look at a piece and it feels like something is missing. And that first point there, we can definitely say that. The whole image is gone. Some guy erased it. You're like, okay, a little bit too much. Jackson Pollock faced backlash pretty often throughout his entire career. And even people today, there's a good amount who still criticize. Although I can't even draw anything. I'm like, oh, let's see what this one looks like. His style consisted of him pouring paint directly from the can over a large canvas laying on the ground. It's different and it's messy and to many that means wrong. These beautiful abstract pieces like Warhol, they all face scrutiny. There's a lack of technique in their work apparently, which to me is a baffling observation. But art is art, feel how you want. I would put this in a living room for sure. Jackson Pollock blue poles, for sure. Debit, easy, nine million dollars. Oh, cool, I have that. Number four. My Bed, Tracy Emin, 1999. I'm a fan of this one, honestly, but I can certainly see why some were freaked out. It's a bit too honest for you, all right? My Bed is a work of art first shown at Tate Britain back in 1999, and reactions were mixed. Some were disgusted, and of course, it being art. They were critical about a messy bed, which is wild to me, while others loved it, whatever. It was deemed a confessional piece. The messy bed, this crowded, intimate space that depicts depression, some gross stuff going on, some personal, it's a lot. Who would have ever thought not making your bed and cleaning your room could be so artistic. Dare I say lovely. So artistic, these dirty sheets. Ah, yes, reminds you of your own dirty sheets at home that you have to go and clean. It makes you think things, right? Isn't that the whole point of art? If you squint, you could probably see bed bugs. Who knows? Number three, Tilted Arc. Richard Serra is an American sculptor and the creator of one of the most controversial pieces ever. It's this massive work of art called the Tilted Arc. Unfortunately installed in 1982 at the Foley Federal Plaza in New York, used to lie this wall of steel. Yeah, nothing like a massive wall to unite all of America, right? Nice. This thing was 12 feet high and 120 feet long. It was meant to redefine the square and bring it to life, but it didn't do that at all. No, nobody liked it. I don't even like it at all. Earlier I was like, hey, art's great. You can feel how you want, whatever. This is just bad. I can't even think of one positive here. Hey, you want shade? Well, here's so much of it now. Enjoy all that shade. Good luck passing here at night. It's really scary now. We made it much more dangerous to maneuver at night. This wall has been referred to as overwhelming and depressing. Nailed it, I'd say. The New York Times called it the ugliest public artworks in the city, and many referred to it as the Berlin Wall of the Federal Plaza. Yeah, I know, right? You look at it and you're like, eh, they're not wrong. It's kind of ugly. It's horrible. After a now famous art trial was concluded, the sculpture was cut into three pieces and removed from the square seven years later in 1989. Now it's in storage instead of, you know, in your way. Number two, Scott Tyler, American flag. 1989, Scott Tyler, then a student of the Art Institute of Chicago, his first big piece of art and the guy gets arrested on the spot. Must have nailed it, let's dive in, what happened? The title of his piece was titled, What is the Appropriate Way to Display the American Flag? And Scott Tyler thought, hmm, oh I know. And then he put the US flag flat on the floor. Now if that wasn't already a red flag, pun intended, it was then placed in a strategic way so that visitors wanting to have to read this accommodating manual, well they'd have to step on the flag in order to do so, which is a big no-no. We don't like doing that. Unless they had that Taylor McWatters extended neck, that manual at that distance was next to impossible to read. You have to really get that zoom in, that turtleneck zoom. Several visitors were arrested for outrage and the artist himself, like I said, Scott Tyler, he was also arrested. He was taken away for violating the flag desecration amendment. President Bush even called the artwork shameful. Imagine that, the president's like, nah, I don't like it. The whole point here is that Scott Tyler wanted to demonstrate the freedom of expression. I think he nailed it. The president's involved, yeah, he did something. And finally, number one, Pisa's Christ. The art here is actually titled Christ, but I don't think I can say piss on YouTube. I'm not actually sure if I can, so I'm just gonna try and see what happens. Pisa's Christ, as I'll call it, couldn't believe what I was looking at right here. New York photographer Andre Serrano, first of all, this man needs to drink more water, it seems. I don't know, this is way too yellow of a mellow. Let's talk about this. 
Christ. I mean, he really nailed the title here, I guess. A bit about the artist, first of all, Serrano, is that they're known for their photographs that challenge social issues, mainly focusing on issues surrounding sex and or religion. And for this one, he chose the religion road, for sure, definitely chose that one. Christ depicts a small plastic crucifix submerged inside of well, yeah, you could probably guess by now, can't you? Serrano saved up urine for this. He saved up a lot of urine. That's like me after Avatar The Way of Water. That's a lot, that's wild. Perhaps the most criticized on our list today, obviously, now it's number one, Serrano lost funding. He was accused of blasphemy. He even got death threats because he dunked the Lord in his urine. Yeah, what a sentence right there, we'll end on that one. Somehow it's still not the most unsettling. I don't know, number 10 was still baffling to me. Those are the top 10 unsettling works of art that angered the public. I'm Taylor McWaters and we'll see you on Bumblebee. Bye.